If you've been stuck in Platinum for a while and are looking to rank up to Diamond, then this video is for you. I've got 7 tips to help you accomplish this mission. And it's not as hard as you might think. From the best way to choose drop spots, to which items to carry, I'll cover it all. I'll be gifting a 1 month membership to one of you if this video reaches 150 likes. Let's start right away with the first tip. Try to land at 3 different POIs on a 3 game cycle. This is what I did for the previous video which was to rank from Gold to Platinum. What's important here is to make sure the first game is at one of the 4 new POIs. Then the next game needs to be a named drop spot in the middle of the map. And finally, the third one sees you land on the edge of the map. Therefore, you'll put yourself in different scenarios such as hot dropping, getting in early fights, playing for the end game, etc. I still did this strategy to rank from Platinum to Diamond and of course, it worked in my favor. Now let's talk about my first day of ranked games starting in Platinum 1. To put it simply, it was awful. Really awful. I played a total of 7 games, finished with a .29 kill death ratio finished 50 seconds on average and somehow gained a total of plus 4% through all of this. This is to prove to you that you're not getting punished too much by having a streak of bad games. The highest number of points I lost was minus 6% while finishing at the 87th spot. On the other hand, my best game was just one elimination and I finished 21st. With this, I made a surprising plus 13%. If your intention is to rank all the way up to Unreal, then putting you in intense early gunfights is actually great practice for you. What seems to affect the points the most is when you die off spawn very quickly. For example, if you finish outside the top 75, regardless of the rank of the player who killed you, it's guaranteed that you will lose a few points. This brings me to the second tip, make sure not to hot drop to the closest POI right under the bus path. Typically, this is usually a drop spot that sees a lot of players landing there, and by doing so, you're increasing your odds of dying very quickly. Let me remind you that platinum lobbies make you face off versus gold, platinum, and even diamond players. These are not public matches, so you will not run into a bot to farm easy kills. Once you make it inside the top 50 every match, it seems the point system may only remove 1% assuming you don't get any kills. Let's point out when I finished 41st with no kills, I had a plus 0% game result. It's no secret that reaching the top 50 takes not much more than 5 minutes generally speaking. So if you're landing alone, then it's a given. Now let's dive into day 2, which was a completely different story compared to the first day. My first game was amazing. I landed in Brawler's Battleground and it wasn't very crowded. I third party the dude who had no clue I was here. Easy kill. Then out of nowhere, Zeus Thunderbolts were thrown at me but they were not hitting. And yes, another kill in the bag. I grabbed the medallion and the mythic AR just before rotating to the next zone. While using the wings, yes that's a mistake, I got forced to the ground and a quick fight on our roof ended up with me being the winner. Let's quickly reveal the third tip, do not use or carry wings. Players in these platinum lobbies are definitely good enough to beam you out of the sky and actually kill you. So it's not worth taking that risk because it's related to that last tip, this is the perfect time to introduce the fourth tip, which is to prioritize carrying shockwaves. They are definitely the best mobility item currently in the game, they are perfect to make a quick aggressive push on an enemy, and there's nothing that comes close to it when you need to escape. Yes, you saw correctly, three players carelessly rotated inside the bunker, but I was there. It was just a matter of being at the perfect spot at the right time. For the next skill, let's just take a second to admire the tracking skills here. God, I love this Ares mythic Warforged AR, it's so good. Here, I'll show you a perfect example of the power of shockwaves and why they're so important. I almost downed the player, but he was too far and went behind the edge of the mountain. My only chance to reach him was to make a push with a shockwave, and it did pay off, he was one shot. This already brings us to the fifth tip. Do not carry or use the Zeus Thunderbolts. You saw me earlier get a very easy kill on someone using it, and now this is the second time someone tries it on me. The main issue with this is that you're going to be immobile while throwing them, making you such an easy target, especially if you are in the open just like this. Platinum players will definitely kill you easily when you use it, so please don't. After this, a strange encounter with Travis Scott saw me get eliminated. I wasn't at full health and missed a few shots, GG. What's interesting here is to analyze this performance and the number of points I got from it. We finished 4th with 12 animations and got killed by a player of the same platinum rank. I believe I made a plus 22% because I finished in 4th place. Reaching the top 50 gives us plus 1, then the top 25 is plus 7, and making it to the top 10 gives an additional plus 15. When you add these three values together, it equals to plus 22%. What gave us the largest portion of points is the huge amount of kills I got. To put it simply, early game kills give you 2 or 3 points at most. Also, if you kill a gold player which is a rank under yours, then you're more likely to get 2 points. If you kill a platinum player which is the same rank as yours, then 3 seems like the most logical option. Now, when you get inside the top 25, the eliminations you collect will typically give you around 4 points. Finally, when inside the top 
150, a kill with the same rank is going to give you plus 5%. Again, because I killed a gold player inside the top 10, then this would add a little less, so plus 4%. By adding all of these values, I am getting a total of plus 43% on the eliminations alone. If we add the 22 placement points, then we get a total of plus 65%, which is only 2% off from what I actually got. For the next game, I got 4 kills on gold players and finished third. Not only this made me rank up to platinum too, but I noticed I got plus 51%. This number seemed a little off, and that is because as soon as you rank up, the game will give you around 10 or 15% bonus that will basically be a cushion for the next rank. Without this, then the number of times players would rank up to 1 or 5% to the next rank would be very huge. I've got another tip for you. When you are 20% or less away from the next rank up, what I prioritize is to go for placement points as much as possible. So when this happens, I increase my chances of reaching the next tier, but also I minimize the odds of me being killed off spawn quickly. The biggest drawback I got after being eliminated around the 90th place was minus 9%. To counter this, I tried to land at drop spots on the edge of the map or very far from the bus path. Because I felt very good playing and was on a roll, I decided to play more. And it was the right decision because as you will see with the next game, I got an impressive plus 81%. Let's see how this panned out. First, I literally saved someone's lives by killing his pursuer. Then, still in restored reels, a game of cat and mouse emerged here and I made a cool looking sliding kill to finish this off. Someone wanted to third party me, I wasn't fully shielded and I still don't know how I did survive after this fight. When it was time to rotate, I caught a fish stick off guard and someone else too. Basically, the fish stick was receiving snipes from two angles, but I was the one who ultimately got the elimination. Then again, I survived this fight with only 7 HP left. A few minutes later, it was very stressful and I actually didn't want to leave my spot, but I was forced to. It turns out the player was right next to me in the same building and even if the range of the auto frenzy shotgun isn't the best, I barely got the kill. After this commotion, Travis Scott wanted a piece of me, but again, I came out on top. While rotating towards the nearest lake, only one remaining enemy was alive. By using dashes and a shockwave, I spotted him, landed shots first, and ultimately got the victory royale. The next interesting match was two games later, when I suddenly was pushed rapidly by three opponents. The first two, I got the job done, but as soon as the third one came, it was game over for me. Nevertheless, I finished 21st with 6 kills, and this added a solid plus 35%. If I had survived until the top 10 with a few added kills, I'm sure I would have gotten at least plus 50%. Then the next 5 matches saw me get 1 or 2 kills only and were eliminated around the top 50. The only exception is one game where I got 1 kill and finished 11th. What's interesting to me is that this game gave me plus 12%, while the others were 4% on average. This reinforces my theory that placement points can have a bigger impact on ranking up. At that time, I wasn't aware that a 4 game losing streak was about to start. The first two were not too bad because I finished 10th and 15th, but both with 0 kills. These two results added plus 3% each. What hurts the most is when I finished outside the top 50 in two of these games and I got minus 9% for both. This demonstrates that you can still rank up slowly while finishing in the top 10, even if you don't get any kills. On the other hand, when you die very quickly right after landing, this is the worst that can happen to you and your current total points. The saddest part about this stretch is that I was at 97% complete, so my plan was to focus on placement points only, but these two games got me back to 79%. But this didn't stop me, I was more than motivated to reach diamond before the end of the day. So I landed very far from the bus path, got a crazy kill on a sweat inside the top 10, and finished second. Honestly, I'm not too proud because I really choked here. The good news is that I got plus 42% and finally ranked up to diamond. There is one thing I noticed while being in platinum 3, it's that many people were carrying bunkers. So my 7th tip is to start carrying bunkers, especially if you are in the end game. There were a few instances where I couldn't do much and was forced to rush an enemy who was inside a bunker. Not only this, but these give you great cover from all angles and establish powerful positions inside the next zones. This tip will definitely translate to diamond lobbies and will definitely look to carry these from now on. And by the way, the diamond to elite ranked video is coming soon or maybe was already published. To check out all videos from this ranked series, make sure to click on the playlist link you see on screen right now. See you on the other side.